Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Apache Cassandra. So far we've done a lot of talking about CQL and how we write statements to interact with Cassandra. And we've also looked at a bit of Cassandra's architecture. In particular, we've looked at replication and consistency. So in the next couple of videos, we'll continue to look at more of Apache Cassandra's architecture. And in this video, we'll look at the peer-to-peer -peer nature of Cassandra. In a typical relational database, a client collects to a server. And often there is just one server and one client. So this is a quite a straightforward connection. But what happens if we want to start to replicate this data in order to have failover and be sure that our data is backed up on the database and can always be accessed? In this case, we use a strategy called the leader follower. And what this means is that one part of the server acts as the leader. And then there are several replicas of the server called followers. So every piece of data that we write to our server is also replicated to both of the followers or X number of followers, depending on what replication we want on our database. So while new requests are always routed to the leader, once something has been written to the data, it will be replicated to each follower. And this can work quite well until the server itself fails or the leader fails. When the leader fails, it can often take some time for something called failover to occur, which means that the client will now route its REX requests to one of the followers and not to the server until the main server or leader comes back online. However, this approach does not get us around the case where we need to store so much data on our database that a single server with a number of followers cannot possibly store that much data. In order to solve this problem, we need to do something called sharding. So the concept of sharding in a normal relational database basically means that we want to split our data up into various sections and have different parts of our data routed to different parts of our database, somewhat similar to Apache Cassandra. So again, we'll have a client. And in this case, the client will connect to something like a router, which will decide where our data will be routed to. And this will use something probably quite similar to the partitioner in Cassandra, where it does some sort of modulus or hashing on our data in order to determine where to route the data to. So in this, we'll again have a number of different leaders and followers where our data will be stored. So this shard will have a leader and a number of followers, which we'll just write as F for now. And we'll also have another shard over here for more of our data. Again, we'll have a leader and a number of followers, usually about three in total. So one leader and two followers and our data when we write it, the router will decide where we want to send the data. So for example, if we write data for our USA, maybe based on the IP of the customer, we might decide that this data will always be sent to this side and data from customers in Europe will always be sent to this side. So we still have the problem here that if the leader fails, we have to wait until one of the followers comes online before we can write data. And this can affect our customers because we may have downtime varying from seconds to minutes. And this is never a good thing. We always want to be online. We always want to be able to write data. Another thing that might occur is there might be some sort of network partition. So each one of these followers and leader is a node. And a partition, say, might occur where some of the nodes may not be able to see the other nodes. So say, for instance, a partition occurs here and this leader is not able to see which its followers are. So in this case, we're not getting the benefit from replicating our data. And if this happens over a long period of time, this node here might be elected as another leader and we might be sending some of our data to this leader, other parts of our data to this leader, which may lead to a lot of confusion and our whole kind of strategy starts to fall apart if we want really consistent data written to the database really quickly. So Cassandra tries to overcome these problems by taking a peer-to-peer -peer approach to its architecture 
rather than a leader follower approach. In a peer to peer approach, every node on our cluster is considered equal. Replicas are completely independent of each other and don't really rely on each other at all. So for instance, when we're writing data, we can write to any node on the cluster. Say for instance, we have a replication factor of three. This means we need to replicate data to three nodes. In this case, we might replicate to this node, this node, and this node. And this is determined by the partitioner. So Cassandra, as we said, can receive a write or a read request to any node. So we can receive a write or read request to here. And the node that receives it is called the coordinator node. This node can then write the data asynchronously to all the nodes that need to receive it. Based on our replication factor and consistency level that we talked about in previous videos, we can determine how responsive Cassandra will be when there is network failures and partitions. We can make Cassandra always work if there are problems in our cluster, or if we want really high consistency and really high replication, Cassandra can be less tolerant to network partitions. It also doesn't matter where the request for data or request to write data comes in from. It can come in from any side of the cluster and that it will can be considered the coordinator node. So if the request comes in here, this node will be the coordinator node. And this node again will write asynchronously or read asynchronously from the three replicas determined by the replication factor and the partitioner. So what happens if there is a network partition in our cluster? Say in this instance, if our cluster gets split down like this and the nodes on this side here cannot see the nodes on this side here and vice versa. So now with this network partition, say we receive another request to write data to the same node here in blue, which is then considered the coordinator node for this read or this write. So what happens here is we can still connect to two nodes that should have the data or do have the data, depending on if it's a read or write, on the side of the cluster where we can see. So the coordinator road will ask those two nodes for the data they have or will try to write the data it's received in the request to those two nodes. And whether or not this is a success is based on our replication factor and the consistency level we have for this read or write. So in this case, our replication factor is three. And if our consistency level for this read or write was set to quorum, then the read will be a success as we've successfully read or written to two of the nodes out of three. Later on, when the network partition is resolved, the data will be updated on this third node here to be consistent with the other two. Note that in this case, if we had written to the other node on the other side of the network partition, we wouldn't have been able to successfully make our request with the current settings of replication factor and consistency level of quorum because only one node that should store or receive the data is available. Many of the clients that we use in Cassandra are what we call cluster aware. So they will know about these network partitions and what nodes cannot talk to other nodes. And they'll be able to smartly decide which coordinator node is the best to choose for a read or write, which will result in successful reads and successful writes even during network partitions such as this. So for instance, our client, if it's aware of the cluster or takes part in the gossip protocol, which we'll talk about in a future video, should know that this is the correct side of the cluster to connect to if it wants to make a successful read or write and not to connect to this side over here.